Hello there, I'm Rhino GT4, and welcome to World Rally Championship for the PlayStation 2. This game was developed by Evolution Studios, who you might know from the MotorStorm franchise or their most recent game, Drive Club. And uh, this was published in North America, at least by BAM Entertainment. Uh, released in March of 2002, exclusively for the PS2, and this is actually the uh, a officially licensed game of the 2001 World Rally Championship. I think it's 2001. Yeah, it is. So that's neat. Uh, I think this is the first like fully officially licensed World Rally Championship game made, and uh, it's a pretty cool one. So. Uh, let's just go through the menus real quick. We have our usual graphics options where we have a track map. We can have our uh, speedometer, you know, attack and speed, all that stuff. Split screen, which I don't care about. Widescreen, don't be turning on because widescreen is cool. And then we can have either miles per hour or kilometers an hour. I'm going to go with miles per hour because I'm a shitty, uh, uh, filthy American who uses filthy Imperial units. Have our sound options. Of course, controls. We have different controller setups. I'm just gonna stick with. Uh, I was gonna say I'm gonna stick with setup one, but it looks like setup three is what I need. Because I'm gonna be using the uh, analog sticks for. Yeah, this game. So let's just change the buttons to analog. And make sure everything else is the way I want it. The one shoulder buttons are for shifting. And break, okay. Uh, vibration, sure I'll keep that on. Then we can position the screen, but it's fine. It, it's fine the way it is. We have some extras as well that we can un we'll be unlocking through this game, such as bonus stages. There's a cheat code input screen, which I'll get into later. Uh, there's also like rally intro movies, which we'll be seeing throughout this playthrough, anyways. High scores, replays, blah blah. blah. Have memory card uh, menu where we can load up the previous save. Two player mode. I can't do because I have one controller. Time trial mode where we can uh, do a uh, run across a single stage in a rally. A single rally mode where we can do a single rally in the game and what we're actually going to be taking care of in this playthrough, the World Rally Championship. Welcome to one of the most demanding and challenging motorsport competitions on the planet, the World Rally Championship. Take some of the best drivers in the world, add some of the most incredible cars, and mix in some tarmac, gravel and ice. Forget about first across the line to race in the WRCs against the toughest rival of all, time. Each rally is broken into stages with points for the fastest times taken to complete the overall event. The cars themselves carry the names of some familiar family motors. But under the skin, their purpose-built rally machines with four-wheel drive, turbos galore and horsepower counted in the hundreds. They'll need it too with conditions across the championship ranging from sub-zero Scandinavian forests to the overpowering heat and dust of Kenya and Greece. With the World Rally Championship, it's not just a question of winning, but surviving. That was a really nice uh, intro video to the Rally Championship. Uh, rallying is one of my like most favorite forms of motorsport personally just because of the insane amount of respect I have for the drivers, but I'll get into that later when I'm not just standing around a minute. Anyways, we have three difficulty choices, but technically two, because Professional is uh, currently locked, but we have Novice and Normal. I'm going to be doing this uh, on Normal, since I don't have Professional unlocked, but uh, yeah, so going to do on Normal. Here are our cars we have to choose from in this game, the Peugeot 206 WRC, the Ford Focus, the Subaru Impreza, Mitsubishi Lancer, I don't know which one this is, probably like 7 or something, the Hyundai Accent, the Skoda Octavia, the Citroen Zara, and that's it. So, there's that. Uh, each car has their uh, respective drivers that you can choose to play as, such as Pojo, you can play as Marcus Grunholm, Gilles Panizzi, Didier Oriol, or Harry Rop Rovenpara. I probably butchered those names horribly. And uh, one interesting thing is with the Ford Focus, specifically, there's actually two different liveries. Uh, if you see in the background there, if you play as Francois de la Cour, you have an uh, all-white livery with RS logos, but if you drive as Carlos Sainz or the Ford driver, which is actually Colin McRae, I'll get into that in a moment, 
uh, you have a different livery, which is cool. But this is the only car in the game that actually has uh, multiple liveries. Uh, the car I'm going to choose for this is I ba basically based this choice off of the success of the 2001 WRC season. And uh, the winning manufacturer of that season, unless I forgot, uh, remembered incorrectly, was Pojo. So I'm going to drive the Pojo 206. And the driver I'm going to choose is Marcus Grunholm, because he's one of the few rally drivers I actually like know by name. So it's a pretty successful driver as well. So going to be in good hands. There are few rallies more prestigious or glamorous than Monte Carlo, and this is where the World Rally Championship begins. It starts in Monaco, then heads up onto Alpine Roads further north before dropping back down into the Principality. It's run entirely on tarmac, but snow and ice always make for a few surprises. The oldest event in the WRC calendar is the one the top teams really want to win. We're starting off this championship with probably the most prestigious rally in the, the uh, WRC, the Monte Carlo Rally, or Rally Automobile Monte Carlo. So each rally in this game is, I believe, five stages long. It, it, I'm a little rusty on my information here, don't mind me. And uh, yeah, uh, difficulty choice does not change the length of the rallies or stages or anything like that. So. It's purely just how difficult are the AI going to be. But uh, here's our first stage of the rally, St. Pierre to Entrevaux. Or St. Pierre Entrevaux, I don't know. I'll probably butcher horribly these pronunciations. Uh, weather, forecast, snow, surface going to be asphalt, as the previous video said. It's a uh, all tarmac rally. 4.5 kilometers in distance, and we're going to be starting at 9.30 in the morning. So we get to, sent to our car setup screen. Each, uh, each rally has their own default setup. As you see here, the game defaults to short gears, brake strength strong, medium steering uh, sensitivity, dry tires, and hard suspension. So uh, I'm just going to stick with that. as Because I'm not really good at uh, tuning my car efficiently, so I'm just going to stick with what the game gives me, basically. So... Uh, here we go, here's our pre-race screen, we have some options we can change, but we've already been through that. We can do a shakedown stage, which I'm going to show off this once. Shakedown is basically, you can do a segment of the stage, and uh, to kind of get a feel for how the car behaves and everything. So you can fine-tune your setup, get two of these. And uh, loading screens are a thing. They're not too long. You also don't get a count on anything. Is where you can uh, see the different camera views. Default. This is a very interesting camera view. It's basically rear passenger in the center, which is really interesting. Also, I need to change a couple controls still. So uh, yeah, here's our shakes down stage. We don't even get any like pace notes from co-driver. We're just driving around the route. But anyways, here's other camera angles. There's this uh, interior cam, like an actual first-person cam. We have our bonnet view, we have our bumper view, and then we have a third person camera. I'm going to be alternating between uh, the first person and third person cameras probably each rally, I would say. You know, each rally or each stage, I'm not sure. But uh, there's our shakedown. Run complete. Nice little run. I wasn't really trying anyways, because yeah, so... Now we can change our setup to fit our car's needs, and I need to work on options here. There's actually one option I forgot to change, and that was to manual gears. So, uh, go me. Anyways, let's get started with our stage. Our first stage of this game. And of the 2001 World Rally Championship. So, uh, I will... Stop talking for at least like this first little bit of the stage, so you, so you can hear the uh, how the game sounds with the car audio as well as the co-driver. Cause gonna be having a co-driver give me pace notes. Cause that's how rallying works. Co-driver tells you where Three, to go, and then the driver two, is the madman that goes go. to places. So off we go. 
the first round stage. Oh geez, almost flipping the car, okay. Just got started, almost rolling the car already. Alright, well, still first place at the first sector split, so yeah, there you go, you have a bit of an idea of how the uh, co-driver sounds like and everything. Uh, the physics of this game is pretty arcadey. Like, you know, this isn't gonna, you know, like, be all hardcore stuff. It's definitely a very easy to pick up and play game. Cars have plenty of grip to uh, get you around, and physics are very forgiving as well. Uh, one interesting thing about this game, though, is in the HUD, and the fact that with each car in this game, they actually have their own tack HUD. So, like with this Pojo, you won't be seeing it much until like late in the game, but um, because I stuck to driving as Marcus run home for this whole you know, championship, but uh, each car has their own uh, tack layout. You see, this is the one for the Pojo, uh, digital tack with black dot, uh, yeah, black uh, things with a green shadow, which is interesting. Some cars have a digital tack, some have actually an analog tack, which I personally prefer an analog tack over digital, but that's just me. Uh, but the digital tack's fine, so, yeah. It's nothing I can't handle. So away we go. Into the end of stage number one. Two minutes, point five one. Ended up winning the stage by 5.9 seconds over Tommy Mackinnon. Nearly six seconds. Here's a little quick rundown of our how we did against the top driver by sector. Say you lost a little bit of time in sectors three and four, but that's fine. Or three and five, excuse me. Then we get thrown into a replay, which is cool. Because, you know, replays are cool. Stuff with uh, very loud music playing as well. But yeah, there's the replays. Can restart the replay, blah, blah, blah. But let's just continue the championship and move on to stage number two. And we set a new record, so I might as well input my name for a record here. Just to be cool. And we have auto save. Because auto saving is okay, I guess. And then we can also do a manual save of the championship, which we can input our initials here so we know which save it is, I guess. So I'll be doing that after every rally. But uh, yeah, you can do that after every stage. We can save the replay to watch it later. This is actually what I'm going to do just for thumbnail purposes. Because, yeah, easy way to take thumbnails for me. And let's continue the rally. So here's our stage results. As I said, I beat Tommy Mackinnon by a nice 5.95 seconds here in the first stage. Carlos Sainz third. The Ford driver finishes fourth. Uh, I still haven't gotten into the Ford driver. We'll get to that in a moment. Richard Burns in fifth place. And then here's the rest of the stage one results. All the way down to Marco Martin in last place, 21st. Some of these standings are a little weird, like, we have fucking Petter Solberg and Marco Martin in 20th and 21st, like, holy crap. Sometimes this game isn't the most accurate in terms of where the driver should be placing, but hey, it's whatever. So, time for stage two, Tourrières. Uh, it's gonna be dry weather, 5.2 kilometers, starting in the late evening. Gonna keep our setup at the same. Not allowed to do any shakedowns. I think the shakedown is only allowed for stage one. If I remember correctly, I'm not sure though. But uh, let's begin stage number two of the Monte Carlo Rally. Once we load, we'll probably cut out the load times at, from this point on. Just because we don't need to see these. I mean, you see the loading screen. So the times are actually a little longer than I remember. But uh, maybe that's just me. Anyways. Three, Here we go, time two, for stage number two. One, go. Off we go. Gonna stay in the third person camera. Probably going to, uh, because these rallies are five stages, I think I'm going to do, like, 
stages four and five of the rallies in the uh, first person camera, probably. Just, you know, kind of split them in half as best as I can. Well, not best as I can, but close enough. Anyways, ooh, just barely in the lead. Barely beat Carlos Sainz in the first sector. Holy shit, there's a turn. Um, as useful as the pace notes are in rally games, I'm not going to be able to rely on them at all because I'm going to be talking over them, so I won't be able to hear them myself, unfortunately. Which, you know, is going to make things a little more difficult for me because I won't be able to, like, know what turns are coming. I'm actually going to have to use visual cues from the HUD. Luckily, this game has a map, so the map will be very useful to me. It's into a very tight hairpin. Locking brakes on this icy surface. But not lose control. So yeah, about the Ford driver name. So um, there's a reason that guy, the Ford driver is named Ford driver. So uh, of course during this time, uh, Codemasters had their own rally uh, game franchise running pretty, pretty successfully in the Colin McCurry Rally series. Um, as you may have seen uh, Thunder do a couple of the, I think he's done Call and Pray Rally 2, if I remember. I know he's done one. I think he's done two as well here on HD Central. Um, so, yeah. Um, basically, the reason why Ford Driver in this game is named Ford Driver because that's actually Colin McRae, but uh, Codemasters owns the rights to the name Colin McRae in a video game. So, Evolution just defaulted to naming him Ford Driver, basically. So it's actually Colin McRae, but I can't officially name him Colin McRae in the game because of licensing. So. Well, the short gears doesn't really work for the end of this stage. Spend the last 10 seconds at 110 miles per hour. Nice crash at the end. Very good. This game does have damage, but I haven't really been doing much to uh, damage my car. So, yeah. Anyways, won the stage by six seconds. That second sector was really good, apparently. I gained four seconds on that second sector alone. So, uh, let's get a record time, do our save. And let's check out the stage results. Carlos Sainz took second in the stage, six seconds behind me. Uh, Tommy Mack in third, Armin Schwartz in the Skoda in fourth place, and Harry Rovenpera and uh, the second Pojo in fifth. So here's the rest of the stage results. Once again, Petter Solberg in 20th, and here's the overall rally results up to this point. I have a 14 second lead over Carlos Sainz. The uh, number you see in brackets next to the position number is the position they were in at the beginning of the stage versus what position there are, they are now after the stage. So, Sainz Leapfrog Tommy Mackinnon for second place. Roven Pair moved from 10th uh, to 8th. Jesus Peraz in the, what, the uh, Citroen moved from 13th to 11th, and uh, you can see the rest. Toshihiro Arai apparently had a really bad stage, dropping from 12th to 15th. And uh, yeah, so there's our current rally standings, heading to stage 3 now. We'll quest it on. Sure, that worked snowing again, 3.3 kilometers, so a pretty short stage, and we are on day two of the rally as well. It's now the uh, 20th of January, so we started this on the 19th. Alright, stage three is loaded, it's snowing here at Monte Carlo, but the track is still pretty dry, so away we go for stage number three, and oops, so upshift a little too much. Uh, starting these stages with manual transmission is a little weird because, like, there's a little bit of a, uh, like a delay between when the stage starts and when you can like upshift out of neutral. It's kind of strange. I really should like. Maybe I should have went with longer gears. Didn't realize how uh, straight some of these parts are gonna be. Oh, well, the default setup is fine. It's fine. It's okay. There's no issues to be had here. But uh. uh I was just saying, oh yeah, like, there's a very slight delay 
like between when you uh, shift and then when you can shift again. Like you can't just fucking uh, go through, go from six to first gear in a fucking nanosecond by you know, just spamming buttons. There's there is a very slight delay, but uh, it's very weird. It's an even bigger delay at the start of the stage. So see, I kind of, I kind of pretty much just spam R1 as the countdown reaches zero until it actually engages uh, first gear. And this was a very short and simple stage. Very straight. That was that was really simple. And it took the easy victory. It was only a minute 21 second stage. Damn. Obviously the stages in this game aren't, you know, mapped to like the real world uh, stages, because yeah, I don't I think the uh, real Monte Carlo stages are a lot more technical and also not 3.3 kilometers. But hey, whatever. So, I take the victory in stage 3, Carlos Sainz second yet again, Mackinnon third, Colin McRae fourth in this stage, and here's the rest of the stage results. Hey, Petter Solberg 16th, he's improving. Hooray. And here's the overall rally results thus far, 18.8 second advantage over Carlos Sainz for me. And here's the... Uh, rest of the standings. Petter Solberg, despite finishing 16th in that stage, is now in last. Well, still in last. GG, Petter. Come on, you're better than this. You're better than this, Petter. Better, Petter. Petter, better. Anyway, stage four. Sistrone Thord. Thorard. However, I should really stop trying to pronounce these stage names. Uh, anyway, 6.5 kilometers. Still snowing, and I'm just gonna keep our uh, setup the same, so let's go. All right, here we go. Time for a fourth stage in the rally. Three, and uh, two, I'm going to uh, go against what I said earlier and saying I was going to switch to interior view uh, 50, like halfway through the uh, event. Yeah, I think I think I'll just alternate each rally instead. So this entire rally will be done with this camera, and then the next rally will be done with the uh, third person or. Uh, First person camera, etc., etc. So, yeah, I think that's how I'm gonna do it. Okay, didn't really need second gear there. Oopsie. Oh shit. Alright, so I think now. That, oh, hitting the wall. I think now that I've done, uh, finished, uh. Well, this stage is, uh, not nearly as simple as the last one. Got a bunch of hairpins. Still leading the stage after the first second split, though. Alright. Yeah, normal is not really too hard. Like, once you get the basic foundation of the controls, this game is, uh, at least on normal difficulty, is not very hard. Don't know about professional. Oh, hey, there's a rock on to the left of the road. Good thing I didn't go that way. Also, I'm really weird. I'm like, I'm really weird about using the handbrake. I.e., I don't use it at all whenever I should in rally games, but uh, I think the way the physics are in this game, the handbrake really just is not necessary. You can easily get the car to slide just by driving it normally, like slide in a way that you need it, so handbrake is pretty much not needed in this game. I am low, but you know, it's there if you need it, and maybe you do, I don't know. Maybe I can improve my stage times by like five seconds if I actually use the damn handbrake, but nah. I was only exaggerating a bit there, but yeah. Whoop. So yeah, I think I've pretty much explained everything in the game. Now it's time for me to like not talk as much and just react to things happening on the road and with. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, the grunts and shit. Oh, this is a very tight hairpin. The hairpin tightened up a bunch. Switchbacks. Yeah. Yeah, this is a pretty neat stage. Much more technical than the previous. Driving on the mountainside. Certain death, uh, off to our left. And one wrong move. Over the cliff we go. That rail ain't gonna stop us. Okay, we'll actually stop us, but... 
there's a part where the rail isn't. And, uh, well, it can't stop us where it, it doesn't exist, so, uh, yeah. Of course, I'd rather not go flying off the cliff, because, uh, I, I can't remember if the game will actually reset your car or if it will like, consider Rally, like, a DNF for the stage. I, I can't remember. Anyways, I actually did not win this stage. I lost two seconds in the last two sectors. Damn. I did not do those last two sectors good at all. Go me. So, uh... Hooray, I'm awesome. Except not. Just save. And uh, Tommy Mackinan actually won the stage by 0 .3 seconds over me. Carlos Sainz, Colin McRae. And here's the rest of the stage results. Subaru's not doing as well as you think they would be. But uh, despite not winning the stage, I still have a very comfortable 25 second advantage over now Tommy Mackinan, who's reclaimed second spot in the rally. So, pretty close fight between Mackinan and Carlos Sainz for second. Colin McRae in third, very comfortable third. And uh, here's the rest of the current rally order. And Petter Solberg has finally, finally made his way out of last place. He's now in 18th. Good. So time for our final stage of the Monte Carlo Rally, Loda Lusaram. On day number three, seven kilometers, no snow forecast. So let's go. All right, so here we go. Time for our final stage of the Monte Carlo Rally. And uh, three, while the game is loading, I actually remembered another interesting feature about this game. It's actually not in the North American version. But it is in the European version of this game. Um, I don't know too much information about it because I haven't bothered researching it, but there is another game mode on the main menu in the PAL version of this game. And it was, uh, I forget what it was called. I think it was called like WRC Challenge or something. And uh, basically what it was, it was a special time trial competition where you could, uh, where he, where he did a, uh, a rally run and uh, was able to submit your time. Like, I think you got a code to submit your time to a uh, official like leaderboard. I don't know everything about it, I just know that was a thing for the European crowd. And I think that would continue on in future WRC games as well. So, uh, Nice little competition that uh, the EU got. Not so much here in the US, but because you know that mode has completely been removed in this game, or this version of the game, so yeah. Good stuff. So, uh probably notice a couple also you probably notice something missing from this game that is in this is usually in rally games, and that is the service area. You know, usually most rally games you run a stage or two and then you go back to the service area. Could repair your damage on your car, change the setup. Not in this game, unfortunately. The car is fully repaired after each stage and like, no real service area. So, it loses a mark for that one, but eh, it's fine. It doesn't make the game any worse. Just doesn't make it as authentic of a rally experience. I don't really know what I mean by that. Anyways, we're going very steeply uphill, holy crap. And also, uh, speaking of holy crap, my current lead in this stage, 10 seconds over signs. After the third sector, Jesus. Apparently this Pojo can really climb these hills. By the way, we're still, still climbing. We are still climbing and climbing and climbing. God. Does this mountain have a peak? And are we close to it? Alright, on to the final sector. Oh, now we're going downhill. It's gonna break a little early for this hairpin since we're going downhill. I'd rather not die. Go flying off into the rail and die. Done a decent job of keeping this car relatively clean throughout this rally. There's been a few instances where I just kind of carried way too much speed and just slid straight into the barrier. But 
not too heavily. So. Plus, there's no real pressure because I have a won a huge stage lead, but also a huge rally lead, and there we go. I win the final stage. I gained 10 seconds in Sector 2. Holy crap. How the hell? <laughs> that is, uh... Wow. Alright. Well then. Cool. I guess. So, there we go. Anyways, here's our stage 5 results. I take the win. 15.88 seconds over Carlos Sainz. So it's like science is going to take second in the rally. Let's find out once we look at the final standings. And yes, he did. And since that was our final stage, we also get a uh, points rewards. Top six score points. I get 10 for the victory. 42 seconds over Carlos Sainz, who gets six points. Tommy Mackinnon in third gets four points. Carlo McRae gets three points for fourth place. Armin Schwartz gets two for fifth place for Skoda. And Richard Burns sneaks into the points in 6th place in his uh, Subaru. Here's the rest of the rally results. None of these guys score points, so... Yeah, there's that. And Piero Liotti, almost 10 minutes behind me in the overall rally. So it took him almost 22 minutes to do what I did in 12. Anyways, here we go. Congratulations, Rally Automobile Monte Carlo winners. Won the rally. We got a podium ceremony video going on in the background. Here's our point standings after our first uh, round of the championship. Of course, since this is first round, it's the same as our finishing order in the rally. So I take the early four-point lead over Carlos Sainz, and I believe... If I press continue again, we'll get the uh, preview video for the next rally. So I will end this segment here. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more World Rally Championship.